Oh yeah, that's a week one pop right there. <laughs> that's above expectation. That's what I would go with. That was about it. It's not under. Mm. What is good? Football is back. Big Co is not here. Jay Wayne, what's up? Jay Jones. <laughs> Say, Say my name. Jones. Say my name. <laughs> Wrapped it up for us. Wrapped up week one. Old Zay Jones. Just brought a just 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 a special place in my heart for Zay Jones and for the real OG uh, FF Dynasty listeners. You know why? Zay, my name. I'm gonna put him on the uh, on the Podfather's uh, must add uh, list this week. <laughs> send that email out. Hit that send button. Bah. Zay Jones. Nothing gave me more joy <laughs> than a Zay Jones walk off. Great cap to week one. So good. Good. So good. So uh, again, we got a lot to get to. Oh yeah, no big co this week. He'll, he'll hopefully be joining us next week. Did you? Uh, did you thrive this weekend, bro? I did. You did. I did. I thrived too. Make sure you guys go download that uh, Thrive oh, Fantasy yeah. app. Huh? Little graphic up there. Just gra- code oh, word. We got a code word. By the way, we got, got a code got word. Grab hold of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, go hit that FFD, all caps, in the pr- for the uh, promo code. Let them know that we sent you. A uh, little player prop contest action. It was a lot of fun. We had some patrons who who got in the money this week. Oh, nice. Went green on us. All uh, right. Yeah. So I'll be in there again next week, and, and uh, hopefully we'll get more of y'all involved. So anyway, let's get into week one, Thrive Fantasy. Go ahead and download that app. And don't they match. They match the monies, right? Yeah, for up the to promo f- code. Up, up to a to hundy. A hundo. So they match all the money you put in up to 100. Go check it out. All right, let's get right into it. This overreactor chill. I think that's pretty much the theme of uh, week one, essentially. Sure. Maybe, maybe bleed into week two. Feels like you need like a four weeks before we actually might even have a clue of what maybe might be going on. Everyone on Twitter already for sure knows everything that is exactly going on. 100%. All right, well, today we're going to start off with a little over at or under expectation. All right. right. Just going to go with a little team action right off the rip here to get us in into the week one uh, flow of things here. So I'll start off. I'm going over expectations. The Philadelphia Eagles, as much as I don't want to give them their due and as much as my wife came home and said, oh, the Eagles are pretty good, huh? <laughs> I was like, well, maybe it's the Falcons. It could be the Falcons. They'll probably beat the Niners next week, and my house Whoa. will be in shambles mm. uh, just to get things going. Oh, yeah, the Eagles are playing the Niners week two. House indeed. divided. House divided. So No sex that week. Got to give uh, Got to give props to Jalen Hurts. Looked real strong. The Slim Reaper, Devonta Smith out there. Didn't look slim. Didn't look slim. He just looked like he was ready to roll. Of course he is. He's the most prepared, smartest non-quarterback on the field. Uh, they got something out of Jalen Rager. Looking, Back from the looking, dead. Looking half decent. Little teaser little there. Teaser. Uh, you know, Dallas Goddard was, was pretty good. Ertz had a little hammy in that game. And Miles then Sanders. Miles Sanders, if he's gonna if he's gonna be involved in that passing game, that, that the way he was there and, and looking as good as he did, um, that, that could be league winning ADP type stuff there. It wasn't super late, but it was he was kind of the running back that everybody was pushing down. Look, it was just a, a position group, a skill group where you weren't exactly sure what you were gonna get. You liked some of the parts and pieces, but you, was Sirianni over his skis, blah, 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 blah. But all reports are the offensive line is playing pretty well. The defense looked pretty decent. Again, maybe it was a product of the Falcons, but Sirianni apparently gave a great speech the night before the game that the guys are really liking what Sirianni's bringing. And again, like it was a skill position group that we weren't sure of. And, and after week one, um, I was actually ended up being a little excited about that skill position group and how they're going to use them, embracing that, you know, kind of, you know, a lot more college like atmosphere kind of plays going on in there. And, and again, got to give Hertz uh, his due. So who was your uh, over expectation here? I'll go with the Cardinals. Cards. Yeah, I like that. Beat up on the Titans. Mm -hmm. Didn't quite see that coming. I mean, we we have high expectations for the Cardinals. They have high expectations on themselves. They have a pretty strong roster. But to come out and beat an AFC championship contending team like they did, it was pretty impressive. The defense played well. Rondell Moore looked like a freaking... Chase Edmonds, a a jack-of-all-trades there. Yep. Rondell and, and looking strong. Kyler was carving it up. Christian Kirk 
had a good game. Nuke was obviously Nuke doesn't need the vaccine to play well, I guess. So he's crushing. probably extra motivated. He's uh, crushing. He fears God. He does. He does. So didn't see that coming. Cardinals over expectations. Cards wax the uh, Chandler Jones five sacks. I mean five. How do you get five in one, one game? Two, three, four, fifth. <laughs> Plead the fifth. <laughs> Old Chandler just out there. Didn't want to play. Didn't even want to play. He's out there crushing. Uh, so we don't know if, if that secondary can hold up for, for the Cardinals. That's supposed to be the weak spot. But Simmons looks like he's rounding into shape. In the uh, Simmons stood Henry up on oh, that goal yeah, yeah, line. Yeah, that was fantastic. Great play. Simmons is, just make, Simmons, is, Simmons is not old. He shouldn't have been out of the game years ago. <laughs> <It's not old. laughs> he, looks, he looks like he's kind of figuring it out. Uh, yeah. And, and the, the, the first round... Linebacker, that other I'm, linebacker. I'm loss of I know. I forget his name right every time. Uh, but he he looks like he could be the real deal, too. For sure. JJ oh, made a couple of plays, and Chandler <laughs> Jones was on fire. Um, so, yeah. All right, let's go at expectations. I'm going to throw the Niners out there. That was kind of what I expected. Didn't expect them, them to, to let, blow it at the end <laughs> Didn't like expect that? them to let them back in the game there. We, they, they let them off the hook. Yeah. Uh, but expected to have an explosive run game regardless who was in there. Kind of expected Mostert to be uh, – short-lived and <laughs> fair and and Debo to be whomever was out there at the receiver position whether it was Ayuk or Debo didn't see the Ayuk thing coming who did Kittle played well Debo played great Jimmy played you know as advertised blew it up blew it early but then you know came back and had some good plays Debo had a costly fumble should put the game away there but mm-hmm. I thought the Niners were basically at expectation already missing some some pieces of secondary is a little questionable missing Kinlaw in the middle so that was a little susceptible but uh, I thought the Niners were right at expectation there. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about these Niners here sure, in a minute. For sure. So who do you, who do you, who are you at expectation? Let's with? see. Who, who met expectations for you? I guess the Dolphins, right? Beat the Patriots. That what you were expecting that? I mean, they need to take a step forward, and and, and they added to that roster. They bo- boast, bolstered that offense. Like obviously couple of those guys didn't play but didn't get any will fuller didn't get yet, so didn't I mean, get will fuller preston williams was out uh but um waddle looked the part and there was a connection there we'll talk we'll bring up waddle later we're gonna do a rookie report at the uh, towards the end of the show but uh, parker showing some life defense playing well just just i just for them to come out and beat the patriots like that i feel like if that was they, they expected to do that. They needed to be at that expectation level, which they kind of got lucky because Harris fumbled at the end. Yeah, uh, but yeah, that game could have went either way. And then the, the yeah. Harris fumble. Uh, you know, Flores has been one of the few people who's had success against uh, his old predecessor in uh, in in BB there, uh, but ca- kind of catching him at the right times um, as far as where the Patriots are typically. Uh, but, you know, like the Saban tree, they don't have too much success coming back against them. Bill Belichick guys don't have a whole bunch of success coming back against them. But Flores seems to have that that, that team dialed in and, and at least BB's number and, and, and can keep it close, if not win BB. those games. Uh, so, all right. And then under expectations for me, obvious one for me, Packers. Which is what I don't know what the hell that was. I don't know if it was hold holdover from. Got to be. All the offseason stuff. Zero Aaron Rodgers interest at all in the team. I mean, how it's got to be some residual effects. And then you got the the Saints. The boys are fired up. Their defense is pretty feisty. They were looking good in the preseason, right? And Just, you know, you, you we were talking about it off air. You mentioned the fact that what's going on in Tampa or uh, in not in Tampa, Louisiana. that's where they played, but in Louisiana could affect them positively or negatively. And they're a team that kind of kind of like has had success harnessing that uh right that bad hardship that's going on and playing right. for the city rather than letting it be a distraction right and you know they played that game in jacksonville on grass they'd been practicing in grass um and Pl- just practicing just, outside in grass right, and just you know really really shocked me i i and my um what's the word of the um the pool that i'm playing in uh it's called uh Dang, confidence really like league or confidence something? pool confidence. where you assign you one through 16 to confidence and i i picked the packers as the 16 uh still in third place still in third place so had a good uh good round other than that uh but did not see that coming at all um so definitely under expectations for the packers aaron says it's one game and a kick in the i don't know if it was balls or ass he said you know what so mm. One could of, be either one. Could, could be, be right in the one. middle. Maybe it was the shins. Could be right in the middle where the taint maybe, is. Maybe it was the shins. Uh, 
I'm going to go with the uh, the Titans. Another obvious one. Yeah, same game. Same, flipped like it, it. Had the over expectations for the cards. Under. Sometimes you got to miss the Elliott that for thing. the Titans. Yeah. <laughs> Search of a different fan yet. <laughs> that that that's what you mean. You got to flip uh, it and reverse it. You put your hands all on your knees and your bows on your thighs. No, that's a different one. All right, that wasn't even Missy Elliott. <laughs> Cardinals I'm, or, or Titans? How, how do you how do you just? Yeah. Cave like that. And Could then, have been like, a little COVID action. They had a lot of COVID stuff. Is it? Hangover kind of stuff kind of Fair. going on. But I mean. Long no, COVID. I just think they didn't. They just didn't show up. They, they need a booster. Go. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what was going on there. But, you know, again. To, for Julio to have, show no, do nothing and then be behind the whole time. Like Ryan Tannehill kind of saved your day from a fantasy standpoint because he threw one in, ran one in. But overall, the team did not. Henry had a, a bunch of carries for little, very little yards. and Yeah, they did a good job. Cardinals just showed out, and, and, and the Titans underperformed, under expectations. And, and, you know, Kyler was was very good, you know, much talked about through eight weeks last year, mm-hmm. and then had the shoulder injury. Still healthy, baby. And He's healthy right now. This week was just video game stuff from him again, and it, it, they're really hard to uh, – really hard to – I feel like we could have put any NFC West team in there outside maybe the Niners to be over expectation because – you know, they all showed out. The NFC West seemed to be as advertised uh, mm-hmm. this weekend. For sure. All right. So let's move on to the next topic. Uh, let's, let's get into a little Zeke Elliott's because it was a, that was the Thursday game. We almost put out a show on Friday just to, just to talk about it because I was sick of it. Uh, and we, we did it, put out a show early, uh, late in the offseason about how Zeke was better than all the – we did a versus, a, a cage match of guys that we put them up against. Sure. And uh, – so now we need to come out and right. either overreact or fucking chill. Which one is it? I mean, you definitely got to fucking chill. On chill this. out, you fellas. Gotta chill. chill. Got to chill. No um, chill. I just feel like the notion that Zeke is washed and Pollard should take over that backfield because he's clearly so much better is so fucking weak. Like, I'm not sure what you're looking at when you're watching this. Like, I think Pollard is one of the best handcuffs in the league. And if you have Zeke, you should own Pollard because I do think he is a capable player. Um, I like him. He's a good player, but he is different than Zeke. They are two totally different players. 100%. Pollard should have a role. He's earned a role. It just isn't Zeke's role. Much like Naheem Hines should have a role. It's just not JT's role. People get so ridiculous because the other guy comes in and does well for a couple plays in a design package that he's a part of that, oh, my God, look at how much better he is than the guy who plays like 89% of the fucking snaps. Mm -hmm. Like, what the fuck are you watching? What are you talking about? What are we doing here? Maybe they were at brunch, man. It's it's just it's always the next thing or the other thing that we want to claim is, oh, my God, that's so good. That should be what's going on. This is so much better. Like, Zeke's washed, man. What do we do? Why are they even doing this? And it's, it's like the other thing is like, The Cowboys game plan was exactly where it needed to be. If the Cowboys would have came out and kept running into that brick wall, you guys would have went nuts that I mean, they probably should have ran into that brick wall a few more times. A few more times. They should have sprinkled some more in. But if they would have just went out there and just ran into that brick wall time and time again, you would have been like, what? Mike McCarthy's playing 1999 football. And don't they know about analytics and pass it on first down? And (laughs) that passing is better than running. And like all this shit. But don't you have to establish the run? Instead, they came out and they they did exactly what they should have done. The Bucs were thin in the secondary. They proceeded to lose more parts during the game. Uh, the uh, unit was clearly struggling, and and uh, the the Bucks run D has been the best run D in the league for two years in a row. And last year they lost Vita Vea like week five, and that dude is a straight up menace. In 2019, just to give you some Bucks defense stats here, mm. um, they ended the year on a six game uh, streak there with holding teams below 90 yards teams below 90 yards rushing and under or at three point yards per carry Not good. Um, three of Tampa's 16 opponents rushed for over 100 yards as a team only one individual Chris Carson he finished at 105 in week nine and in the Which Chris Carson where I was pulling all this from Maybe. stated that this I don't know what metrics and how they were putting all this together but they were basically had graded out as like the 11th best run defense since the 16 game schedule came out in 78 like all time that was a 2019 Bucks defense and last year we know how good they were they were absolutely outstanding they were the best team in the league and the running backs on the ground uh, against the Bucks, notable uh, shout out to uh, the the big dogs got to eat guy Nick over here. 
Uh, Do little dogs not have to eat? I guess not. That fu- fuck chihuahuas, I yeah. guess. I don't know. <laughs> you guys um, get scraps. But here's the list of, of the 2000 running. Kamara, 12 for 16. C-Mac, 18 for 59. Melvin Gordon, 8 for 26. Uh, David Montgomery, 10 for 19. Aaron Jones, 10 for 15. Jacobs, 10 for 17. Akers, 5 for 15. CEH, 11 for 37. Gurley, 1 for negative 1. Like... That's a bunch of really good running backs up against the, the Bucks last year, probably sans Vita Vea for at least a couple of those games, and we're still absolutely ridiculous. Um, so it's just like, what, what did you want them to do? That was the absolute right game plan. Again, yes, they probably should have sprinkled in a few more run plays. Let's get up to 15 or 16 run plays. Right. But like at the end of the day... Because he was getting yards. I mean... On right, fair amount of the and carries. To, I mean, to, to add on top of that, like the Cowboys are then missing what is regarded as probably their best lineman and one of the best linemen in the league with Zach Martin with the COVID stuff. So, you know, and they will get him back next week, but right. then they lose Lael Collins right. to a five game suspension for skipping drug tests. What an idiot! So we're, those things are scheduled, Bo. Like figure it out. I just I just don't know what the hell is going on here. And then I saw an Evan Silva tweet talking about Zeke looking timid. Like, I can't agree with that at all. Def, a strong um, disagree. I thought he fought for the majority of the times that he had the ball in his hands. He Bad was fighting tweet. for inches. Just Bad person. Scrapping for, for extra yardage there. And he was running into brick walls a lot of the times. But it was, there wasn't anything timid looking what I saw from him, he didn't look timid in the way that man was pot, plas blocking his ass off and All running them. up into contact and just handling dudes, doing what he needed to do for that team. He was pancaking. All up in that ass. He was pancaking bang, bang, bang. guys. Put up a dog's ass. Even on play action, he was picking up the fucking right. blitzer. Like he was saving Dak Prescott's life. He was doing what he needed to do for a team. Right. Which is things that Zeke Elliott may have in the past been accused of not really caring all that much. Right. Possibly. But now him, him and Dak are like best friends. He's got to right. protect his boy. And he just stood up all game long. There isn't a chance in hell Tony Pollard is providing that for no, the Cowboys. No. Because he and just the, ain't and, that dude. And can my man get a, like a on target target? Right. All those targets were garbage outside of his frame behind him slowing his momentum down right like that first pat the the one towards the end zone that could have easily been a score with a better ball or got had it gotten out sooner right like so if you want to hate on him for getting tackled by the db at the goal line sure i guess that's fine on the jarwin yeah on that pitch jarwin missed the block completely with by the time he had the ball in the in his hands the db had sort of ate up his angle would i have liked to see zeke run that guy over for sure but you know not quite the right scenario. Maybe if it was just a handoff and he could have been running, but it was kind of a run out there and pitch it to him. And by the time it was in his hands, that guy was had already – Jarwin had already olayed Jarwin him. Jarwin had straight olayed him. And he was on top of him. And, and look, Dak just simply wasn't looking Zeke's way. And like you said, on some of those dropbacks, like, and that he did actually throw it to him, they weren't the best targets. They were late behind him wherever they weren't in the great spot. I think this absolutely changes and improves week to week. I don't see the Cowboys throwing it 58 times every game. Um, but again, I think that should have been the game plan, judging on the personnel that they had and the and the Bucks had and the injuries they had. I mean, and then just to basically kind of put a bow on this, where Ezekiel Elliott was, his snap rate was at 83.33%. Um, he still received 73.33 of the team's overall running back carries. He ran a route at 63.7% of the team's passing downs. Overall, he was on the te- on the uh, on the field for 72.46% of the team's passing snaps as opposed to last year which was 57.06. Obviously just one game and that's from fantraxhq.com. So like everything that you want out of Zeke, out of a workhorse back, out of out of a guy who's going to get as much opportunity as possible was all there. It just didn't unfold for him in the manner that you needed to unfold for and him. Neither and neither did it for so many backs last year against this exact same right, front. Right. And so Stop it's top backs. It's all there for Zeke to have a great Week in, week out performance. Bot, pick him up. Send, send a trade offer. Right. Send, scoop him up. You if look anyone's at, mad is Zeke because he's washed. Or they saw Ivan Silva said he looked timid, which is complete bullshit. Right. I don't know what you're fucking watching, Bo. No. Well, who knows? But go scoop up some cheap Zeke if you can because I'm, I'm going to go send a trade offer for tonight. One. Yeah. I mean, I, I think you see more of a 15-20 a carry a game threshold, five to seven targets for Zeke moving forward. 
I think that's that should be easy. Uh, that's sort of like what we saw with the JT Naheen Hines week one as a just more JT Hines comparison. And I think there should be an easy double digit touchdown threshold for Ezekiel Elliott in this offense. Like I just big time. I just absolutely think it's ridiculous. Like he gets an edge on on Devin White on like the one good run that he had, right? And it's just he like he can get the edge. He still looks spry and quick and the, fast the, the as feet, hell. The and feet look quick. He looked decisive. He looked like he was dialed into what was going on. It just wasn't his night. It just wasn't for him. Dak wasn't looking his way. So anyway, doesn't matter. Get off this bullshit that Pollard is is better and should be getting right. all these snaps. Get off all that garbage. Like I like Pollard. I think he's good. Let him live in that Naheen Hines kind of role and, and be the backup to Zeke and let him. He's earned some, some, some. I'm not trying to take any shine off Pollard, but stop hating on Zeke so goddamn much. Right. It's ridiculous. Um, and then one note before we get out of that game here, I think Mike Evans could be a po- another possible buy after getting, you know, the, tr- the, the Trayvon Diggs here who, you know, was definitely the best corner that the Cowboys have and, and may have caused tommy to maybe look at some of the other shiny objects that he has at his disposal so many a little easier and, and mike mike even had a couple plays that were there that just kind of got tipped and batted around that just kind of changed where he thought the ball was going and didn't end up i mean mike could have ended up with 10 12 14 points here on this night with just the targets that he was seeing against this good opposition just a couple of weird little tips and and ball movements that that kept Mike Evans from having a, just an okay night. Um, right. But I, I think all reports are Mike has looked fantastic through camp. And yeah, just I'm, not worried. To, I'm not worried about Mike. That's one week. It goes, yeah. go send some, some trade offers, try and scoop some cheap Mike. And I mean, I can see Tommy wanting to get him some extra, extra this week after having a down week, right. you know? So right. fire up Mike Evans. All right. You ready to move on to the next thing? Let's do it. All right. Let's talk a little. Niners here. We'll talk talk the uh, the Niners trio. I do think we o- do we overreact? Who re- pick pick one? Should we overreact to to Brandon Ayuk? That's a good one. I kind of want to overreact, to Brandon Ayuk. I mean, I think I think there's there's some smoke there. Trent Sherfield's the best player they got. Right, he's better than. So if, I mean, if you Ayuk. go through and you read, he's trash. You read everything Ayuk's that's trash. going on with with Brandon Ayuk. And, Tell me and the all Niners. that's going on because you're the from Niners guy. Is he in the doghouse? I think I think he is certainly in some sort of a doghouse. And when you read through a bunch of different stuff, I don't I don't know if there's any validity to any of this. There was a couple of people saying that, you know, him and Sermon possibly had missed curfew and were a little bit in the doghouse. Can't be or missing curfew, kids. Maybe Ayuk wasn't as focused down the stretch in training camp. And preseason, as he wanted, he was he was unguardable for uh, a lot of training camp. Apparently, according and to a the lot beat, of last season, according to the beat writers, and last season, and then just had some some drops, and and then there was also a little bit of chatter of that he's in camp Trey Lance and has maybe been a little more pouty and vocal, vocal about it than maybe the coach wanted to. I don't know if any of that shit is true. All I know is that. Textbook Trent Sherfield, as they're calling him. Textbook Trent. Needs to do exactly everything perfectly and come in there with a grade A number one attitude, which I'm sh- he sounds like he did. And Ayuk is 10 days removed from a hamstring strain. So if you read all of the Shanahan comments, he said, yeah, Ayuk needs to be, you know, a little more focused, needs to learn how to maybe be a pro a little bit better. But we were also limiting Ayuk because... He's not that far removed from a hamstring injury, which is something that he has had a problem with. Um, And I mean, when he was on the field last year, he was absolutely ridiculous. Um, Did Trent Trent Sherfield earn the right to play? Sure. Did they need Ayuk in this game? No. Will they need Ayuk at some point? Absolutely. Would I play Ayuk in my starting lineup this week? No. Are Um, you super bummed about your Ayuk stock? You got to be in redraft right now. It's a bummer because it's a short season. Maybe there's a little, uh, since people are throwing around that maybe he's Dante Pettis, maybe there's a little sliver of hope to go buy some cheaper Ayuk because if he would have came out and put up a Debo stat in week one, this is a, a, a direct big quote, co- a big co stat. A big from, quote? A big quote. <laughs> uh, stat here is that, or a, we were talking today about our FFPC teams, um, that if Ayuk would have done what Debo did this week, he would have basically just already been locked into just ma- moving up two more rounds in rookie drafts already because, God damn, look at how good Ayuk is. And I would, I love Ayuk. I think he was great. I was Ayuk over every – give me Ayuk. I want to get as much Ayuk redraft dynasty as I can. Rookie so, drafts? He would move up in rookie move, move up in startup start drafts. Start like he would, okay. he would have been just ascending a, a, a round or two already. Borderline unobtainable. Right. 
So maybe this gives you a sliver of hope. I don't think that he's just never going to play again. And is and it just first off, he's a better and, player than Pettis. It's not even close. And I can't imagine it's the same off the field or practice thing, but it sounds somewhat similar. Sounds like maybe he was being a dickhead and Shanahan's trying to punish him and Trent Sherfield is just fine and can run the offense and does everything Kyle wants him to do. So he's trying to send a little message to him and hopefully Ayuk can be like, all right, man, my bad. And there's instead of further digging a line in the sand, which that could be the only thing that might be detrimental to this situation is Kyle just proving a point. But eventually you're going to need him because he's the best wide receiver you probably have. He does a little bit something different than Debo and Debo hasn't been healthy either. Those two guys and Kittle on the field, you have a ridiculous one of the best cores. And and for your offense, the yak ability of all of those players yeah. have, are fit perfectly into their scheme where yes. Trent Sherfield is not those guys with the yak. So, and there is something to him being sh- 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 somewhat remo- shortly removed from a hamstring right. injury he and had, maybe uh, being a decoy of, of sorts right, out there. Right. right. There's the, we've seen decoys in the NFL him before. Him and Sherfield played close to around the same snaps. Just didn't see any targets. You saw Sherfield get that touchdown. Um, but of course they were having him out there returning punts. So he returned like one punt and then they had Sanu in there. Like it's, it's, I think there was somewhat of a decoy factor in there, like leading up to it, all of a sudden he wasn't practicing and then he, he got some limited reps in um, beforehand. So, I, I you know, I don't, I don't think this is at the end of the season. This could just be one of those things where overreaction and we probably needed to chill a little bit, but there could there is a tiny bit of smoke there. It just I think it's going to be hopefully I can can be a bigger, bigger man here um, and get right. So. You Should we go? freak out? Should we overreact about Sermon being inactive? I mean, I got a text from Big Co right after the game started, and he was like, "What's up with the uh, what the fuck? What's up with Sermon being inactive, Bo?" And I was Man, like, "Should I have not spent first round pick?" On I was like, "Well, Trace I was like, they just wanted to punish all the idiots who I tried to tell not to draft him in the first round. They just wanted to make Everyone sure that, that passed- you knew that you were an idiot, right?" Everyone that, that guy. everyone that passed on Devontae Smith and Jalen Waddell and Rondell Moore and Terrace Marshall, you passed on the on those dudes that take Trey Sermon. Bateman. You're not feeling great right now. Didn't make you feel great. Now we could be next week we could be overreacting to Trey Sermon having a great week because he's definitely gonna get on the field this week with uh, no Jeff Wilson yeah, available. All and those no, other guys like already put touchdowns down on an NFL field and look fucking yeah. f- very spicy. I'm Sermon ready to overreact about different. all these rookies. Sermon gives you something different than than Mitchell and Hasty does. Different style, different player. Um and, and you know, I think he'll be just fine, but they I love agree. This kid Mitchell. And Let's definitely overreact. I'm just glad. Over- I'm just glad that every you know sermon may be just fine and be good, but it just felt good get, to catch a little victory lap and just feel like vindicated for a week that you can't be drafting the Niners running back uh, up at up at one six seven eight because until they prove further that we're going to use this stable, then I can't I can't fuck with you. And and Elijah Mitchell absolutely broke out, put a stamp on it. And looked absolutely ridiculous in his uh, looked fantastic. Looked looked premiere. fast. Looked untackleable at times. And if you've been following us, every time we got a chance to tell you that you should get Mitchell on your team, right? Sans Sermon, unless Sermon really fell, it was it was Mitchell out of our mouths every single time that you possibly could get it. Yeah. And again, it's kind of a combo platter here. It's nice to just take a little lap here. I mean, I'm not gonna get crazy with it, but Mitchell looked fast, explosive, elusive, and powerful. He looked everything amazing. that you wanted to see. He um, looked amazing, and you know we've been we've been on him all off season as like a, a late two, third round rookie pick. We have him on all of our teams. And Casey texted me during the game. He was like, so glad we have Mitchell on all our teams. And then, like, the Roto World blurb that comes out about Mitchell is like, he needs to be added everywhere. And we're like, yeah, no (laughs) shit. That's what we've been saying. And then there was some stupid tweet from uh, Fusu Vu. He was like, if you're spending 50% of your fab on Elijah Mitchell, you have bigger problems. And it's like, I don't care what your team makeup is. Which, if you're listening to us, you already have Mitchell. He's not on the waiver wire out there. But, like, it's, I don't care what my team makeup is. I guess whether redraft, I'm good, I guess bad. redraft, he's probably not on too many teams. But e- redraft. Even I'm, redraft, I'm if fine. I have a spot. I'm fine with blowing 50% of my budget on Elijah Mitchell. You're telling me that yeah. I can get a Niners running I'll back. I'll blow my number one good? waiver claim in a heartbeat. Fuck it. 
Oh, 100%. 100% I'm blowing that number one waiver claim. They Let just lost Mosser to the year. For the year. Yeah, today he was at, said he was out for the year. Now, Sermon will be active next game. Sermon, and he might, whether, he'll get some run. But whether fuck. he was hanging out with Ayuk at the strip club late. Right. Uh, you know, maybe that was the only reason he wasn't playing. But Mitchell, for the fact that he, we, we said this, they said we said this when they cut Gallman. The fact that Mitchell had missed a decent amount of time in camp, then came in and made and some mistakes, made in, some the mistakes in that preseason game, and, and then they still cut, still cut Gallman, the and then Mitchell pro. comes out and gets the first carry. And then the third round pick is inactive in Sermon, gets the first a carry, healthy and scratch, then shortly a healthy after scratch. that, takes it to the house, Woo! Is was super Dude, he was shrugging off exciting. would-be tacklers yeah. all night fucking super long. Super exciting. And early on... Not that the Lions are that great, but Early on in the camp, they were they basically were saying that Mitchell was playing head and shoulders better than Sermon early on. Uh, then there were some injuries and some other things. So, and Sermon had a couple injuries too. So I'm not not trying to hate on Sermon. It's not a we like Sermon. We were sad that he got taken up, by the up. Niners and then was a first round pick. Right in rookie drafts, we we're like, well, this is a bummer. I guess I won't have any Trey Sermon. Thought I was going to get him cheap because everyone hated him because he had like two games where he played well and then wasn't injured. But yeah. then he goes and gets drafted in the third round by the Niners, and now you got to get him in the first round because he's right. going to take over everyone. He healthy fucking scratch. Get, blow that fat. Empty, empty the wallet on Mitchell. You need like, to, y'all need y'all boys needed to chill on Trey Sermon all throughout the offseason. You heard yeah. it here. And let's let's uh, rip Van Winkle. This just overreact on on Mitchell. So let's get excited. Yeah, for sure. Um, all right. Have you? Uh, is it time did, to? Did you thrive? Is it time did we to talk thrive? About this already? We did talk a little a schmidge. Sometimes you just got to come prop up on on Thrive Fantasy Ooh. this football season. Uh, Thrive Fantasy is a daily fantasy sports and esports app for player props. With Thrive, you can eliminate the countless hours of research and focus only on the top tier athletes that have the biggest impact on the game. Choose ten out of the twenty available players, player props to build your lineup. Each prop is assigned with a fantasy value for both over and unders based on how likely it is to hit. Hit the most props. And rack up the most points to win a share of the prize pool. I just wanted to chime in. No, go ahead. <laughs> Thrive has over 140,000 guaranteed in prizes for NFL Week 1. So, obviously a little bit old old read, but I'm sure it's right rolled over onto Week 2 and awarded over $4 million. <laughs> Thrive's featured a 100K guaranteed contest, $20 to enter. First place takes home 20 k so go ahead and thrive. Get download that app, Thrive Fantasy. It's it was a lot of fun. If you like the player props, it, you kind of like they said, you get this tournament style thing, with you pick ten of these props, and they're all sorts of different things. They're they're the big time players, so it's a whole lot of fun. There's actually a couple different styles of games on there that you can play. Uh, so go ahead and use that promo code, the FFD, all caps. Sign up today, receive a hundred percent instant first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. Go ahead and download that Thrive Fantasy on the App Store or Play Store by visiting their website, www.thrivefantasy.com. Sign up and prop up today. All right, a lot of fun over there. No bullshit. I w- I'm not going to plug something that I that I don't think is is pretty fun and 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 cool. So go ahead and, and try out that Thrive. Thrive to be better. Gotta thrive. All it's right. hard to thrive in 2021, but that's how you do it. The FFD. Let's get it. All right, let's talk a little Clyde Edwards. Hey there. <laughs> All right, so. Gets me every time. Big on, big on, big on Clyde. Oh, he's washed. He's bad. We got you. Got jag. The jag. Uh, you know. Sal, Sal. Ten, only, only gets you 10 points in that, in that first fantasy uh, action here. But again. Playing the Browns, supposed to be a strong unit, you know, maybe the most complete team. That's all we were hearing all, all offseason and a revamped front and linebackers and all this and that. And, and they played great. Uh, Clyde had 14 attempts and, and three targets, called all three of them. And I'm, I'm just not going to be out on Clyde Edwards Alaire. Now, mm-hmm. maybe this, maybe eventually. So you're chilling. I'm definitely you're chilling. chilling. Maybe eventually it comes to be proven, and and I guess you could go back to last year where there was some of this again, where he's just, it's basically Hill and Kelsey, and there's really not a whole lot of room for any great fantasy achievement going on other than those two. 
But man, I, I, I believe in the talent. I believe in the player. I believe that even the Kareem hunts when he was on there, he kind of had that up and down. And then once he settled in, I mean, he was, he was really, really solid for these guys. And I think Clyde is right there. They haven't even unlocked the, the receiving value of this guy. The rushing attempts, 14, not bad. Still coming off an ankle. Good defense. Right. And uh, they were pretty much in a, in a negative game script for most of the game. So you were hoping for maybe a couple more checkdowns. That would have been nice. I, but, you know, if we could, if we could, if you can tell me that Clyde Edwards could see 14 to 17 attempts a game and see – you know, three, five target, three to five targets, maybe creep up into that six, seven range in some games. That's I'm fine with that being on the Chiefs. Like, and I, I just want a part of this Chiefs offense, and right. I think he's the third guy in line to bust out to get fantasy points on this squad. So I'm going to keep buying up as much Clyde Edwards as Lair, and I'll go down with this ship if I have to. But great player. Maybe the situation proves to not be as great as we want it to be. And I know a lot of people are already out, so I'll take. I'll, you want to give me some more? I'll take some more. Yeah. I'm going to chill. I'm going to chill with my CEH stock. Uh, I'm down to try to acquire him. I'm not bailing on this position in this offense. This is probably, this has to be worst case scenario. Still got you 10. Could have easily had a touchdown. Like, this is a potent offense, and he's the only guy there. Nobody else got, like, any run. Like, uh, tied for third on the team in targets, even with, with just three. three. Uh, but, hey. hey. Tie for third. Say what you want to do. There's some sort of uh, Those are straight facts. There's some sort of analytical target percentage there where he's uh, he's <laughs> up there. Could you tell a lie? Never. Could you? No. Do you, would you keep it one hundred fake? I keep it one hundred with you, like just okay. like Jadakiss said. Nah, not not the best Jadakiss song. Oh, get out of here! It's a fine song. He shouldn't try to sing during a hook. Oh, I like a little raspy singing. He shouldn't sing. I'm gonna keep it one hundred with you. He needs to just. <laughs> Anything else on Clyde Edwards? Get off my man Jada's nuts. Jason. Jada. That's his first name, right? Jason. Because he said it in his raps. How do you, nah, man. Go buy Go get some che- Clyde Hilaire. Chill. I thought you were about to say go cop some Jada kiss. I was about to say, I agree. Learn how to rap. Learn something. I mean, just, just hit him up on Spotify. I mean, you don't have to <laughs> cop it. I mean, support my man. No one's buying music. Whatever. Anymore. I mean, get him. I don't even make money. Send, just him, send him 10 bucks on Patreon or you something. Got, yeah. Support my guy. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> So these got a tour. People don't. You don't sell records anymore, uh, do they? I don't know how it works. Does Spotify pay them? This isn't, a, this isn't a record industry podcast, Jason. Yeah, maybe we should. Maybe we should. Uh, maybe there's something onto that. They're doing. They're doing just fine. Well, that's what everyone thinks, but they're really getting fucked. Ever since Napster, no one pays for music anymore. Mm. Nah, I think they're fine. No one's copping music. You pay Spotify twelve bucks a month, and then who knows what they do with that money? Who knows? Pay Joe Rogan with it. Paying a lot of people. They're getting so much ad money, I'm sure. There, does the ad money go to pay? Anyway, whatever. <laughs> Let's move along. What are we What are we doing next? Jamie Talk and Styles P are just fine. Don't worry about them. Well, I know they get it. They get it how they live it. Yeah, I mean. So. They're uh, more respect than money, and they're fine with that. As I get older, I don't need as much money, you know? That's what, that's what, that's what Styles said. Or maybe Jada. No, they're not. They would never say that they, in a rap. No, they absolutely talk about getting less money. They said they got more respect than money. Mm. Like, well, they're not trying to get less money. They would never I mean, say they that. They didn't say they were trying to get less money. They okay. Just, well, it kind of made it sound like that's what they said. I just don't want you putting words in your boy's mouth. I'm not. Those are facts. Those, that's <laughs> that's one hundred. All right. Let's fucking move along. <laughs> Those Thrive guys are like, what do we sign up for? Jesus. Here? All right. So let's get into a little Monday night. Bum, 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 bum. Is that Sunday or Monday? All right. It's Monday. Uh, Tyson Williams. Had a nice little performance there. Don't had, forget ha- the apostrophe. Had a great little breakaway run there. Look, Started quick, off real strong. Fast. Ended that, ended that uh, run with an exclamation point if there. If you started him because he was the de facto, you got paid off right you there. You were off. like, oh, shit, I'm about to get mad paid. Yeah. But Pump then, the breaks. you know, I, I the guess I, I guess decided I to little, not overreact with how good he looked. No, <laughs> they decided no. decided to chill. They chilled, and they put the guy who just got there for breakfast, and <laughs> they decided to let him close the game out. Barely stirred his coffee yeah. up with creamer. Ended up out, out, out uh, touching Tyson Williams and I just I don't I couldn't figure out exactly what happened why it happened and, and why Latavius Murray was ending that game he did end up scoring a touchdown for him um, but 
it was just very odd and it makes me i got i was a little excited for what you were seeing with tyson and he hasn't played a whole lot and right there for is, a know, second you were like it doesn't matter that they brought in every single unsigned right. named running back he's like probably gonna hold on to this job with how good he's looking but but from the insinuation at the end of that game, Tyson's been in camp all, all, all offseason and Latavius Murray just got there and, they're, and then they're closing the game out with him. Like that makes me, you know, we always thought this was going to be a shared backfield, but this gives me more of an inclination that it's going to be Latavius as being the lead dog and Tyson being the being the 1B once Latavius they, gets up to speed here. They do want to share it. They do. There, there was always going to be a, a share of some sort regardless of who was in there. Um, but it makes me less excited about Tyson Williams. And, and is this, you know, do you get out of Tyson Williams uh, as as quick as you can? Or do you just say found money, you know, maybe that he looked pretty fun and good for, for a couple of plays there. And the, the, the run, the touchdown run was great. So do you just try to ride that out? I don't, I don't think you're going to get James Robinson vibes here for having value going into next season necessarily. Be, you know, I guess Gus and... and and uh, J.K. could both be slow to come back next if, season. But If someone wasn't paying attention and didn't realize that they moved along from him to Latavius at the end of the game when it mattered, and maybe there was some I don't protection think a cash, issues. I don't think a cash fan was. Right. They probably saw the stat line. He got a touchdown. He scored me double-digit points in the well, high. You might have went to bed. You saw the touchdown. And so then fucking to late. Yeah, the game just drug on forever. And... So, yeah, I mean, I would probably try to cash out on Tyson Williams. I mean, you, you paid nothing for him. You're not counting on him. Maybe if you had J.K. and Gus or one of the, just one of them, maybe you're, like, kind of banking on Tyson. And if that's the case, if you're just, like, you basically really just spent need, either fab money, waiver wire, or just free for Tyson, basically. Might have been the fourth-round pick. Cause he yeah, was, if you had a late rookie draft. Right. If you're smart. But uh, I would probably move along, right? Yeah. Ship him out? I guess so. This just all depends on what I can get back for him right now. I, might, I would keep probably for a second. A second. Like, I'm just going to ride Hold it out. Hold it out. I can figure out how what to happens. fish a first out of this deal at some point. I probably would take it. Or, or, probably or a can't good get a first. Player, player, a good player swap here. Right. Um, but, yeah. I thought Tony Jones looked pretty good, though. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Tony Jones always looks good. Tony Jones looked good. <laughs> I would love it to good. Tony Jones. It's been kind of Tyson. Now he only got he got more run because the, that game was yeah done. But but and it was just like you said they weren't gonna. It's Kamara right, and, and there's no like it. He had the Latavius role, which was never gonna get you ten points right. But if God forbid something happened to Alvin Kamara, which would be terrible, then Tony Jones would be immediate start plug and play player. I mean yeah, so. Of course, they were. He was going against the Packers, and then boys had checked out. So yeah, they're just they're still on the beach. Yeah. All right, what are we doing next? Let's get into the rookie recap. Oh, I got a little graphic for you, pleasure. Uh, I thought you were gonna hit the. Burp, 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 burp. Oh yeah, we could definitely do that. <laughs> <laughs> How much time you got, buddy? Oh, not a whole lot. So let's go. <laughs> It's getting late. We started late. It's Tuesday. Man, Tuesday. it's so hard to cram everything into a, a little Tuesday. Which you'll be watching this on a Wednesday, but got to Tuesday. I get it in. We're already behind. Everyone's Chris had Long. all their week one reactions. Chris Long put their they put his podcast out Monday morning. Hey, they recorded Sunday night. It's a dedication, it crushing. Man. If you have nothing to do but watch and talk about football, he's killing it. So kids are older, you know. His kids aren't older. No, I don't know. I would assume they are, but they're not. He probably has a full time nanny. This, or, or just his wife. I don't know. Fair. Nah. All right, let's get into the rookie recap. <laughs> We're gonna try to do this week in, week out, and then and you know get get in a little more in depth with some guys here and there. This week one, you know, we're just trying to have some fun through the show. Uh, so we just wanted to hit, hit a quick little recap on, on a lot of these guys. And we're going to try to name an MVR. We're uh, going to work our way towards the most valuable rookie for week one. For week one. So let's do it. All right. Well, obviously, the first ones we name are not going to be MVR. We're going to save the MVR for last, which if you've been listening, there was a teaser on who it might be. But let's start off with a Uncle banger. Ebenezer. Let's start off with a Would've banger. The freezer. Jamar Chase. He can catch. And Who'd he, have thought? He just... Boom! Shot that hand up out of the grave. Yep, and he's most he's, drops in the preseason. He's back. Hope you baby. traded him. And he could, you know, this, this pro football without the white stripes. I can't see it. 
Didn't have a single... Didn't have a single drop. Mm-mm. Instead, had five for seven for one-on-one and a touch. Mm-hmm. Uh, lost the yips. He was plucking balls out of the air, out of, out of his frame, behind him, keeping it moving. Showed off his speed, ran right by 21. Bashad Breeland, RIP, for a 50-yard touchdown, showed just off, like he was in LSU again. Showed off some good moves, I, get, I believe, against... Um who is it got Patrick Peterson? Mm-hmm. I think he got him kind of turned around, made him look silly on, on a play. So so if you didn't lose the faith in Jace, Jamar Chase, you're feeling great. Oh, yeah. No reason to. That's that's why you just got to not overreact and just relax. Relax. Jamar Chase, baby. Bengals looking like they might have a little something. That I, For a minute there, that C.D. Lamb versus Jamar Chase was heavily in your favor. <laughs> just getting murdered everywhere I looked. But after week one, bounce back. Coming back. Don't look like as much of an idiot for taking Chase over CeeDee Lamb. Probably got to take CeeDee Lamb, though. Probably was still wrong. This doesn't make me not (laughs) wrong, but it certainly helps. All right. uh, The Slim Reaper. We've talked about him a little bit already. Six for eight or six of eight for 71 yards and a touch. Just tutty. Just looked fluid. Worse. Looked like he did. <laughs> you brought it up. I know. Tutty. I didn't even have that written down. He just loves ball. He does. He loves ball. Showed an instant connection with Hertz. They had the scramble drill rolling. He was just eating up any zone that was thrown at him. He was just fucking crud- And the Hertz was all over him. And, uh, you know, you saw the hands and the nuance on that drag route. on, on he, The toe drag on the short out. Look at that toe drag swag. Just and he didn't look. He doesn't look slim. He doesn't look small. He looks just fucking fine. He looks phenomenal. He looks great. MVR? Nah, man. No, Not yet. No, no. Kit. He's no, a chill, he's chill, a he's chill, a first chill. top first round pick. He's supposed to do that shit. Let's go, Devonta. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Love it for anybody who knocked him down their board for no reason, or anybody who traded out of every one six that you had to pass on. Devonte or Waddle every single time. Rooting he, for my man. He's about to slay it. Don't yeah. worry about Devonta. He'll yeah. be just fine. I was more worried about Hurts, and now I'm less worried about Hurts. So take it to another rook. Yeah. The other uh, Alabama man, Jalen Waddle here. Four for six. 61. Common theme here between these rookie wide receivers. Showed a connection with his college quarterback. Touchdown. Yep. Made a ridiculous catch on that that. From the slot where he, it was just basically like a, a go, I guess, and then went up and just manhandled, high pointed it, drink. I think I'm out, but just beasted just him. Fake it. It was amazing. I uh, think he had a drop or two, but he'll be all right. Ankle looked fine though. Looked yeah. healthy. Looked spry. Quick. Looked, looked like spry. himself. Looked like himself. Did. So you're feeling v- great about Jalen Waddle. Right now, that outlier or bust looks like an outlier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bad breakout age. <laughs> <laughs> Bad breakout age, bad college dominator, but still can score a touchdown in the NFL. No way. He could be good. Mm, mm, mm. What do you know? What do you know? All right. The unicorn. Kyle Pitts. Get pitted, bro. Not as... The Falcons are bad. Them boys probably shouldn't have taken Pitts. Very possible that they could just be a dumpster fire. But I guess it's a positive to see him get targeted eight times. For sure. Catch four of them, only 31 yards, but... Reportedly ran a route on 90% of the pe- dropbacks. Ridiculous. And uh, was in the slot and out wide very often. So so good usage. Should go up. He's a tight end as a rookie, so you can't expect that much from him. You got to give it a minute. Like, look how long it's taken Hawkinson to be the f- beast that he looks like he is. It's, yeah. what, year I mean, three he, for him? He's, like He's shown you... He's shown you- a good year last year and, and some good times as a rookie. And I'm sure so we'll see we're, some we're spectacular see stuff from Pitts. Pitts to be what he was just doing, moving all around, running around. Uh, this could have easily been a better stat line. They just had a lot of fourth, third I, and fourth down targets. I don't so. know what was going on with the Falcons. I don't know if they're actually that bad or they're going to get it figured out here. They thought with Arthur Smith, you're going to be Are you the know, Eagles have, have really a good, good offense and, and, and really be prepared. But it just seemed like, again, that they, they were not. And maybe they're just terrible. But Maybe they figure it out here. Kyle Pitt's going to be just fine. I hope people overreact and do the, the, the JT thing from last year and get super butt hurt and upset about it and want to get rid of God. Just get rid of Kyle Pitts for whatever you can get for him. 
Mm, I don't think that's going to happen. No. I think people are going to hold on till that ship JT sinks. Was, everybody, JT was everybody's darling. It's and fair. then by f- week four, it was like, just get rid of him. Like, hey, he's, gonna, he's Trent Richardson. So this guy's Baron, he's Brandon Pettigrew over Kyle Pitts over here. <laughs> that's not fair. All An- right. What else you got? Let's Anthony Schwartz flashes. Schwartz. I saw that he had a very high, uh, high grade for PFF or somebody for the rookies as far as the grading scale goes, whatever the fuck that means. Caught three of five targets for 69 yards. You like to see that if you took, we, we hadn't had a bunch of Schwartz in our name in the off season, but definitely flashed, uh, Flash some some shorts. Maybe the Schwartz be with you. Yeah. <laughs> Kenny Gainwell. Kenny G. Rewarding you for taking a <laughs> you for taking a swing on him. Uh, nine attempts for thirty seven yards and a touchdown. Two two catches for only six yards. Played twenty five snaps, but he, and I think he had another big play call back. Yeah. And uh, just looking good. Looking yeah, good. I mean. Again, this was a, a unit and a just a team that you just had so many question marks about where they were going and what they were doing. And I just, Kenny Gainwell is just another piece to that puzzle of what they have going on of, of just feels like they have a nice mix of, of a hybrid college pro style thing. And, and Kenny is just a good all around player that can mix right in there with a, with a Sirianni who has had guys like Eckler and been around guys like Eckler and Naheen Hines. And, and I think Kenny Gainwell is, is, uh, you know, right up there with, with the Ecklers of the world and the, and the Naheen Hines of the world. Tip so. of the cap to Sirianni. Yeah. Whipping that shit up. He Rondale Moore. Back and forth. Rondale Moore. Rondale. I didn't see much of that game. I had to go back and watch some highlights and then caught caught some Rondale Moore just yakking it up. Just yucking, Yuck. yakking it up. He looks exactly like that uh that meme or that gif or whatever where, where this it was like this is Rondale Moore when he gets the ball in his hands and they like set a duck down in the water and the duck just takes off. Like he's just a knifer. He's a knifer. Yeah. He's a knifer. I can feel it down in my plums. Been loving. That's how Rondell makes you feel. Some Rondell Moore. I have one share of Rondell Moore. I finally got him in the last draft that I have. It's a four-person keeper league. I, it doesn't matter. I just wanted to finally get a share of Rondell because I missed out on him. Didn't have any early seconds because my teams are good. Mm. And I couldn't figure out how to get up. It's a mini flex. And get there. Yeah. <laughs> And I missed out on Rondell Moore, but I've been all over him, and and uh, he he showed very well. Love the potential for him in that offense. So yeah. So let's get to one quarterback here who maybe should have been the MVR team. Well, fuck quarterback. Team didn't win. Maybe Damian Harris cost him that uh, dub. That dub possibly. Mac but Jones. The quarterbacks always win every award. They just, I, know. I don't even know why we do MVP or any of that stuff. Or most Heisman valuable or, quarterback. Or any of those most, things. Yeah. Like, can we just make? The quarterback awards something separate and then just go with the rest Everyone of the players. Everyone else. Like, it's right. so stupid. I liked it. Um, but Mac Jones looked very solid in his debut. Gets gets probably outside of Jimmy G the best situation oh, that for sure. any quarterback could have been put in and just kind of tailor-made for what that system is and where they're at and is just all in on what they're doing. He looked very comfortable, very poised. He made some very good throws. Um, and, and could have easily led the, the Patriots to a 1-0 start against that those pesky Dolphins. So many fumbles, man. I do not want to be a Patriot in the team meetings this week because Billy, Billy B, BB is going to be lighting their asses up. Uh, so, they definitely lost that game due to turnovers, and that's something they don't usually do. But like you said, Mac Jones looked poised, did what he had to do, and he he's on the best team of all these rookie quarterbacks. He slid till fifteen. Good line, good defense, and and they lost they they lost so many players that just opted out for COVID. So they have like half a team coming back. Yeah, and and they they, went they still out and had spent the fifteenth pick, spent some money on on receivers. Picked Aguilar looked at, Aguilar looked uh, as as best he's ever looked i feel like he he was the yips are gone he was making tough contested catches and like in yep. traffic and scored and i mean it was fabulous for nelson aguilar saw john who cut a flip john <laughs> yeah 
John who looks like the maybe the tight end to get John there. Well, I only saw like the first Hunter's, half of that Hunter, game. Hunter's but. coming off a little shoulder thing, but he'll be just fine. I think it's going to be a good offense. Off something. Um, so I, I'm, I'm excited for that. Mac but Jones, because it could have easily been the MVR. If Mac Jones didn't win the MVR, who could have won it? Hmm, what's the one rookie that we fucking love that hasn't been mentioned during this segment? I wish I had one of those poppers to just bust off right now <laughs> pop confetti in the air or like a drum snare roll. drum elijah mitchell why you gonna be the mvr why you fucking gonna be the mvr mitchell. gotta be elijah mitchell I like you. so much more fun than picking the stupid quarterback yeah give me elijah mitchell plus he's a niner you're, you're not affiliated so i felt good that you were you were on board with it i said uh, i was you, like you we got to go with elijah mitchell as yeah. mvr right and you were like well it probably should be mac jones but 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 you know that's no fun and i was like yeah fuck quarterbacks <laughs> fuck mac jones don't give a shit about mac jones so we've just kidding mac jones we've heaped some praise on mitchell already we've proved some haze on uh, <laughs> heap some praise on ourselves for telling you about elijah mitchell um because why not and it was supposed to be fun. This is a this is a fun thing. You know, we were right. You were dumb. Um, Just listen. Whatever. Uh, wrong plenty. But yeah, now Elijah Mitchell looked so good, and I'm I'm super excited to see what happens with this with him moving forward. He looks like he's got just every component you want of a running back. And we haven't even really seen the hands. The hands are, the hands right. are legit. Didn't have a catch, right? Um, Didn't so really get targeted. I didn't see much. Hands, in the-, the hands are a huge positive of that man. So. Come, coming from that uh, raging Cajun offense. They asked him, you know, about about his success in the post game presser. He said, "I got to give credit to the the men up front. Mm-hmm. Just he's like, I still got some work to do, but I did have fun. But that power and that speed and that shiftiness just, just in got the that, scheme, in right. this scheme, right? And guys are dropping like flies. Now, yes, Trey Sermon will be in the mix next week. Hasty will be in the mix." They'll probably uh, they already they brought in carry on right. Mm-hmm. Uh, they st- <laughs> <laughs> carry on Johnson. He's back from back the from dead. The dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so so he might not be MVR every week. You know what I mean. But for him to come in as this late round pick and and them boys needed him. Mm-hmm. They had to lean on him. And he came through for him. He was the most valuable rookie of week one. Boom. Rookie recap. Most valuable rookie. We're going to uh, we're gonna keep that rolling through most of the season here. We're going to do some more uh, rookie action. We're not going to talk about every rookie every week. We'll probably be less rookies as we move forward. Uh, but we'll get a better, you know, and as we go on quarterly, maybe we'll do a little rookie, a little bit more rookie review of kind of more of them. And uh, we're going to try to do uh maybe once a month kind of shine a spotlight on maybe a college guy that's coming out uh that's that's moving for not gonna be a devy kind of deal but you know give you a couple yeah, we're not trying to we shine don't, a spotlight on maybe somebody who looks good we're not trying to help you put these guys on your devy team we're just trying to prep for next year's draft right already already down a, a really solid running back in abraham but is it a serious injury he's out for the season oh. i just said leg injury i didn't read too much into it that's a bummer so that's a, that's a huge bummer. But we're going to try to get a little college guys involved as we move through the season. So, uh, you know, some, something to look forward to, something to watch on Saturdays. Uh, but anyway, let's let's wrap this thing up here. Got a couple more little things, just fun, stupid stuff like we, we've been talking about back from the dead mm-hmm. uh, all all podcast long. So uh, a couple guys back from the dead here, guys who were permanent were in the ground before. But now they're they've, they've it's like a thriller video all of a sudden. <laughs> Uh, you got Jameis, so famous Jameis, back from the dead. He's he's resurrected. He's out there. Which the preseason kind of brought him back from the dead, but this is his regular season awakening. Right. So you know, if you probably if you, never have a stat line like that again. One forty-eight for five touchdowns. Yeah, fourteen for twenty, one forty-eight and five. No picks, no turnover. That's, that's probably never happening again. Uh, he didn't look. Didn't look terrible. They looked like they had a good game plan. The Saints are always going to be prepared for the most part. Um, you know, is if you bought Jameis for cheaper and super flex, good, we're not really talking about one quarterback here, uh, but if you bought him in a two quarterback or super flex league, would you be looking to, I'm not looking to, wouldn't be looking to acquire Jameis by any means if you haven't already, uh, but would you be willing to sell Jameis Winston for uh, in the Patreon group? They 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 kind of put a first plus price tag on him, and if that was the case, I think I, I think I would uh, would, be, would be selling. Now the plus would have to be you know not just like a little throw in, 
but you know the plus would have to be something well uh, you didn't you know. pay much for him if no. you have winston you didn't pay much for him but it's a starting quarterback who just had a nice thing nice deal so if you could find, be the quarterback of the future for the can, saints it certainly could, could be, be and, the, and maybe it's a huge mistake by be selling better him. than drew Brees. but i feel like if you find the reactionary players in your league better than 42 year old drew Brees. well maybe if you can find those reactionary players in your league you pro- you, get, you get that first plus something decent you know, I, I don't, I don't hate that that move off from from a back to the dead player here. Um, David Njoku, the chief with a granite gazelle, was out there running around looking very good, looking catching, making some handsy catches, looking like it's, I felt like Cleveland had like too many things, too many assets, and now all of a sudden I'm looking around going, they don't really have any assets, like. Besides Chubb and Hunt, and then there's you know Jarvis. Jarvis. And Odell doesn't play, so that you know that you felt. I felt like it was so watered down over there, and now I mean, it they feels paid like Hooper they need, a bunch of money. Yeah, but Najoku looked like he was a little bit more. I saw you know Hooper got a little bit of love, but it looked like Najoku was back from the dead, looking like I, I'd put some feelers out for Joku, baby. Let me get a little Joku. He's probably on some waiver wires. Let me get some Joku. I like it. Yeah. Uh, Christian Kirk. Straight dead. All up in your ass with the resurrection. I had cut ties. (laughs) All the lies that you've been living in. (laughs) Fuck out of here, Christian Kirk. But that was a mistake. I mean, was it? Not not hurt Kyler. Just looking like a video game out there. Throwing bombs, throwing darts. I mean, AJ Green had some targets. Had a decent amount of targets, but only reeled in two, I think. And and look, they, you know. If Rondell really emerges, maybe Kirk doesn't have a huge role, but definitely nice to see uh, back from the dead Kirk. And, and it was always a guy that I that I really liked. It just had been a couple of big games and then bupkiss nothing. So he was like he one was one big game, and then nothing. Like so yeah. he's he's we're, it's d- day of the dead over here. Yeah, I don't know if I said that right or not, but it's going with dead in Spanish. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Brian <laughs> Edwards being the hero of the day. Cue the Metallica right there. Um, just 55 minutes without a oh, fucking target. Yeah, it feels there like. was so much Twitter of invisibility. He had the cloak of invisibility on. And then all of a sudden he came out and he was the hero of the day. Yeah. Brought them, brought the Raiders back from the dead. Yeah. So, so little Brian Edwards, we t- gave, Pepper gave carry on a little shout there. out there. I don't know if he's actually back from the dead. And he seems like it's probably awfully troublesome. It's very uh, stingy. <laughs> um, but, Anybody it's else? Rickety. Anybody else back from the dead? I'm sure there's way more players. Jalen Rager. Rager. Rager was dead. Oh, no. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Nice to see Jalen out there running around. A little Rager action. Which I wouldn't care if I didn't trade Mark Andrews for him in one league. And then now I need Rager to be good. And that's the only share of Rager I have. Oh, well, Juwan, uh, non-tight end Juwan Johnson was never dead, but he was never really alive either. There was just kind of like in purgatory. Nobody really even knew about him. Same with like is, Van Jefferson, kind of yeah, never dead, but always dead, never right. alive. Nice to but, see. Nice but to Van, see baby, had to get his name. Him. Let me get some Van. Said on this Let me show. Get some van. Well, so would you after after two TDs for Juwan Johnson? Do you think you, well, you think you could sell him off? I mean, I guess, I guess. Week one, I mean, I'm just bringing up a guy that, you know, might have some. It was, what do you have, like three catches, two of them were touchdowns. Yeah, I think so. Uh, they don't have a ton of people to throw to. I would I would go. Troutman, I think, leaded, led the team in target percent. I'd put out some feelers for Marquez. I'd still, I'm still down to try and buy some cheap Marquez Callaway. That, I don't see that stat line happening again. That, that was a odd for James Maybe. to throw five touchdowns and nothing go. Maybe he just can't Marquez shake a number way. one. I don't know. Maybe. So maybe maybe you know, maybe anybody who got off Kyle away for that second before the season was a great move. I I, I chose to hel- hold in the free stock that I got from him in, in a couple of deeper leagues. Um I don't know. I don't if know I, what to I didn't do even with try Juwan. really to sell him, but Callaway that is, but Juwan, I know me and Big Co picked him up in every FFPC league that we could. We, I, we picked in FFPC, him up in, I can see every moving, him on, moving along. Um, I don't know if that you actually can, but he might be a guy that you might just throw some feelers out and see what the market kind of bears for you. Um, wish Big Co was here because see what he had to say. All right. Uh, KJ Osborne was another guy I wanted to, in a deeper league. If, if, you're, if your waivers go through and, you, and he doesn't get picked up, deeper league, KJ Osborne, you know, had, had a, they've, he had a little bit of love during camp, and uh, the Vikings need a third. 
Uh, they need they need a third for a good menage. Got to be looking for a third always. 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 Oh, out of town, though. Got to be out of town. Got to be out of town. Can't Somebody do you don't can't, know. Can't do it in town. And you got to have a, aliases already made up. Got to have those right in the holster. This can't be a friend. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Unless they're moving out of the country and <laughs> joining the Israeli army or something. <laughs> I mean, if you are born in Israel, right. you have to. Yeah. But well, anyway. I don't know that you can. I don't know they let outsiders in. Anyway, let's wrap this thing up with things I learned this week. What did you learn, Case? Ah, oh, just David Montgomery's still a jag. Ah, I mean, just that it looks. It looks like the the, the Rams defense is it just, you know, that, that's they'll just tack that right on to that strength of schedule argument and and just that you know he just ran through a bunch of trash and just a jag, still a jag. That's what I learned. Mm. No? Mm-mm. Okay. <laughs> You're being sarcastic. I am. David Montgomery, baby. I wanted to lead the show off with him so bad and hit that horn. But <laughs> <laughs> fuck the haters. Let me get David. It's always David. It's always David. It's always been David. There's a guy. We got to get the Independence Day clip. Uh, David. <laughs> David. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> this is his dad, right? This is Jeff no, Goldblum's no, dad? I think it's a, one of the guys that works in the... He's always on the phone with his mother. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the guy who sounds like he's very... Yeah, st- yeah, yeah, yeah. David, David. <laughs> he, stays oh. in, he stays at the, at the, at the place and yeah. he doesn't evacuate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me get the David. <laughs> all the David. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm glad. Yeah, I'm I mean, glad, he looked I'm like glad. fucking DeAndre Swift out there. He looks yeah. swift. Mm. He looks swift. Y'all keep fading. I'll keep getting paid. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I need to see a little bit more from him. Like, what more do you need to see from this man? Nothing. Jesus. Show the graphic. Show that stupid fucking graphic that you guys get all upset about one more time that they showed at the draft about his feet and his eyes and his this and his that about being all these great players. Well, it is all of those. So suck it. Eagle Scout, baby. All right. Yeah, the Eagle Scout. You want to go? You got anything you learned, or you want me to keep going? I learned that uh, Al Davis still has a Lloyd Christmas haircut. <laughs> the fuck is up with that, man? That's uh, It was a couple of my team names were Al Davis's barber, or Mike Davis. It's not Al Davis. Oh, right. It's Mike Davis. I have Al Mark, Davis written Mark down. Davis. And maybe Al Davis back from the day. It's Mark Davis. The Raiders coming back for the life. I don't know who. they just like... Hey, hey, Mr. Davis. Yeah, still have the same bowl. Don't worry, we haven't gotten rid of it. We'll just plop that thing on there and just scissor right around it's, it. It's it's like a it's it's not a it's not a regular bowl. It's like um a clay bowl. It's <laughs> off oblong. It's not fucking circular. Symmetrical. It's not. Yeah, it's not symmetrical. It's not it's a fucking oblong. circle. It's f- or they put it on sideways maybe or his, some shit. Maybe his late father How made it in pottery s- class and he just. I just. just can't. <laughs> I keep seeing these memes about, like, you're not bald, you're just poor. You're not ugly, you're just poor. This man is rich, but he's still ugly as fuck. Maybe the poorest owner in the league, but still. Definitely the poorest. (laughs) They couldn't afford to pay Khalil Mack. That's why they had to trade him. You have to have, like, 50% of your guaranteed money in a bank account or something like that. They don't. Guys, we can't let this out. We don't have it. Right. Things got a little wonky. Uh, Somehow they found $100 million to give them. You think I'm going to let the barber go? No way. (laughs) Max got to go. It's it's the barber or it's Max. (laughs) Somehow they found $100 million for Jay Gruden. Waste of money there. But, uh, might not, that might have not have to do with anything about money being in a bank account for a non-player. That for might be a, coach. a separate. I don't think that works against you. They're like, we, we're good for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one says car. $250,000. Might want to hold on to that one. On that one. <laughs> those, are, those are as good as money. Those are yeah. IOUs. <laughs> All right. Well, I learned <sighs> that Pollard is greater than Zeke. What are we doing? Pollard's just greater than Zeke. give him the Zeke. load of the yeah, carries. I just don't even know. Zeke's watch. He's timid. He looked timid. He was playing timid. Pollard's Pollard's greater than Zeke. This is what I didn't learn segment. What, what else did you learn? I don't know. I don't. I didn't. Uh, Tutu Atwill didn't play a snap. <laughs> have that written down for some reason. I learned that uh, third in a Walmart parking lot is a unit of measurement that means very long. Mark Sanchez used that, dropped that in a game. He's enjoyed the that. worst. No, oh, I really enjoyed it. It was on the Niners game. I think it might have been his first game. I thought it was pretty good. Did you? Yeah. Enjoyed, Nothing Mark Sanchez enjoyed the commentary. does. Third in a Walmart parking lot is a great description for third down. I guess. 
Even Peter. blind squirrels find a nut. He probably didn't make that Peter up. Peter in the house. He's the butt fumble guy. I don't have to hate. He hates on himself. Oh, nothing worse than, than people going back to the butt fumbles. Nothing worse than ever. a butt fumble. Oh, get out of here. That was the stupidest shit ever. <laughs> terrible play. I learned. He fumbled. It I learned that, Heinz, butt. that he and Hines got paid, so we could just. He's better than JT. Chalk up, say goodbye to JT, cue up the goodbye yellow brick road, and send him packing. Also, Hines greater than just JT. So uh, that's all we need to know. He got paid, and I don't not just I don't even know why J, JT's basically Trent Richardson, so let's just let Laheen Hines run the show over here. So JT still caught six balls. Oh, JT. Suck it, haters. Hope you <laughs> traded him. Hope you traded him. <laughs> Hope you traded him. All right. Well, that's going to wrap up this. Zay Jones, edition. baby. <laughs> Zay, my name. Love it. We hit that, that end music. Oh, guys, if you stuck with us for this song, definitely. Let oh, me hit you that didn't get a single subby subscribe button. the whole time. You, you, you. Sometimes you, you overlook mentioning it. Mm. We're just trying to thrive too much. Just, what about us, Casey? Yeah, I'm thriving and vibing. I need to be subscribing. Oh yeah, hit that code that uh, the FFD all caps. Hit that yeah. D. F to match your money up to a uh, hundred bucks. Yeah, boom. That means you put a hundred in, you have two hundred. That's how that works. That's how that math works. Mm. All right, boys. Till next week, or maybe not. Maybe some shit pops off, and we're feeling like a you know we'll go back watch some extra games. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm the busiest I've been during football season, so I'm probably not going to... I don't have, you know, four or five TVs set up every single weekend. Go back, watch some games. If we stumble across some stuff. We covered a lot today. We did. I like it. And it's only an hour and 11 minutes in, so not the worst. Let's get it. Not we'll see you best. next week. We'll go edit this bitch. Get it out. Peace. <laughs>